Hi everyone, today's video is about the neurodiversity movement. And this may end up being my longest video, which is funny because this was going to be a footnote on another video. And I got more in depth with it and realized I had a lot to say. So neurodiversity, the neurodiversity movement I should say, is a movement that posits that autism is not a disability or disease, but rather a benign difference, uh, such as being left-handed. Um, and I've been familiar with this term for a while. I didn't realize the extent of it until a few months ago when I was on Facebook and there was an article about Dr. Temple Grandin that referred to her as autistic. And I went into the comments to say person first language, you know, to call her a person with autism, not autistic. Uh, my mom worked very hard to make me understand that I'm Emily. I'm not Asperger's. I've actually asked people not to call me Asperger's, that's not my name, my name is Emily. And I stated as such in this comment, about person first language, and I didn't expect a backlash. It's in any other disability community. Ask a parent of a child with Down syndrome, they will beg you to say child with Down syndrome, not Down syndrome child. So I was shocked when people were commenting that I was wrong, that I should be calling myself autistic. I had someone even say, there's something wrong with me uh, if I don't call myself autistic, if I'm not proud, there's something wrong with me. Uh, and that was my really introduction into how far this movement has gone. And I do not agree with it. Autism is a disability. It does impair me. It does impact my life. And um, I'm not saying that we don't need acceptance because what you'll find is people saying, uh, we don't need a cure, we need acceptance. We need society to uh, accommodate us. And I, I agree that we need acceptance. Society has never been good with disabilities. We kind of went right from shoving them in inst institutions all the way to uh, abor abortion. Um, there's, there's not, we've never really been good at acceptance. We don't want to see it. We don't value people's lives with disabilities. So yes, more acceptance all around. However, we also need treatment and a, and a cure. And the neurodiversity movement will say we don't need to be treated. Um, say we don't have a disability. And I don't agree with that. What I would like to see, and this is completely unrealistic, but I would love to see disability be a choice that adults can make insofar as if you're born with a disability, you can keep it if you're happy, or you can go get a treatment and a cure. That's what I would love to see. That's not realistic, unfortunately, uh, for any number of reasons. When it comes to autism, that's not realistic because at this point in time, it's not realistic because it's a developmental disorder. I was born like this, so they would literally have to undo my brain development, and that's that's not possible, but I will be the first in line uh, if and when that becomes possible. And you will find out why, because I have a video coming up called Highlights of Living with Asperger's. And then I have two videos about low lights. It turned out I had to make low lights into a two-part video. So you will see how it impacts me negatively and why I would love to get rid of it. And why, you know, if, if we lived in a world where it was a choice, those neurodiversity people, they can love their autism all they want, call themselves whatever they want. And I, would, I and people who uh, agree with me would be able to get rid of our autism. What's more realistic, though, in the near future, I think, as opposed to it being a choice, uh, is prenatal or newborn testing. And on the one hand, you know, you, you'll hear things like with Down syndrome. The statistics, 90 plus percent of people who get a prenatal diagnosis will abort the baby. Um, so I tend to flip-flop when I get into prenatal diagnosis of autism, which obviously is not a thing right now. But if it were to be, I know the neurodiversity people would call it genocide to eliminate it. And I don't agree with that. The lower end of the spectrum causes a lot of suffering. Individuals sometimes are trapped. Sometimes they're fully normally intellectually and can't communicate. Uh, families get burnt out trying to care for some very behavioral individuals. Society has to pay to care for these people. So I would not object to eliminating the lower end of the spectrum. 
However, where I start flip-flopping, if prenatal diagnosis was a possibility, I don't see it being possible to determine the severity of it. Again, maybe I'm wrong, maybe that will be a thing. At this point, I don't see that being, um, I don't see that being a possibility. You wouldn't know how severely affected. So you would also end up eliminating the higher end of the spectrum. And do we want to do that? Um, some days I would definitely say yes. I would definitely say um, we should eliminate the higher end of the spectrum too. But then, you know, some people in history uh, may very well have had, had autism. And if they had not existed, what might we have lost out on? Um, Mozart and Einstein are some commonly cited ones that I'm not so sure on. The two that I've heard, and I urge you to look up, Thomas Jefferson and Henry Cavendish. I believe these historical figures um, had autism, and so eliminating the higher end of the spectrum, you might be eliminating some brilliant people, but I lean towards yes. If the question is we want to eliminate the spectrum, risking eliminating the brilliant end of it, I say yes. I say I'm okay with not having sensory issues, uh, with not having social skills deficits. I, when I was younger, without really knowing it, I was more towards neurodiversity. I would say if I eliminated my autism, I wouldn't be me. But as I've gotten older, I don't buy that anymore. Because when you meet people on the spectrum, yes, we share symptoms, but we're all very unique people who would still be that same person without those symptoms. So, uh, I do not support, as you, so, I guess I, um, not running as long as I thought it would, actually. Uh, so, I do not support the neurodiversity movement. Um, I definitely support researching treatments and cures for autism. Um, is there any, sorry, I have notes here. I want to see if anything else. I wanted to say, oh yeah, there was something, sorry, this got missed earlier. I was talking about how I would love to see it uh, be a choice. And in my mind, that solves the problem because adults can choose. But I know that um, the neurodiversity people would be like, would be saying, how do I put this? It's a bit of a gray area. Um, you deaf babies getting cochlear implants, babies born with dwarfism getting limb lengthening surgery, and you hear adults with these conditions who disapprove of those things because they're happy with their lives as they are. So that's why, you know, where am I going with this? That's why I would like it to be a choice for adults. I wouldn't want parents necessarily making that choice uh, for that reason, because some adults are happy with it. But then I start flip-flopping again. Because what if their child turns out to not be happy as an adult? What if they're severely affected and it ruins their childhood? So, I, the only thing I can say for certain, I don't support the neurodiversity movement. And I will say for certain, I see no problem with eliminating the lower end of the spectrum. Um, I lean towards yes when it comes to the higher end. And... In my ideal world, it would be a choice, but of course that comes with the gray areas I've just discussed and how, once again, neurodiversity would stick their nose in it. So I think I'm going to wrap that up. Uh, I hope that's clear. I think I might have jumped around slightly, so feel free to comment if you have any questions. Uh, thank you.